So this video may seem a bit weird considering I just did another video about upgrading Fedora 25 to 26, but in that video I also said that I was only testing Fedora 26 and that I hadn't decided whether or not I was going to actually fully switch to Fedora. I've been running Fedora for about two weeks and I've been using it on this 320 gigabyte regular hard drive and honestly this hard drive is kind of a piece of crap. So in this video I'm going to be switching my entire workstation setup over to the brand new recently released Fedora 26. So I've already got a USB thumb drive set up with the Fedora 26 image so let's go ahead and boot into it. So this is the first screen of the installer. Creating a USB boot disk and booting into it is pretty self-explanatory so since we're not testing Fedora, we want to actually install it. We'll just jump straight into the installer. It automatically detected my locale, which is cool. It detected my time zone, which is great. Now, I'm not nearly as familiar with the Fedora installer, let alone the partitioner, as I am with other installers. Since I have two hard drives, I usually partition my install in kind of a specific way. And I'm not actually seeing a way to really fine tune and tweak the way the disks will be partitioned like you can in other installers. So I guess I'm just gonna have to guess and hope that the Fedora installer will sort of figure it out. I want my one terabyte drive to be my entire home partition and I want my SSD to be my root and boot partitions. So with automatic partitioning selected, I guess we'll go ahead and just install Fedora and at the end we'll double check to see if that's what happened. It's kind of weird, but hey, let's take a leap of faith. You know, one thing I will say about the Fedora installer is that it's really, really nice looking I mean, it looks like part of the operating system, like a native app, which is cool, but it's also super, super simple. Compare that to like the Yast installer, which is unbelievably complicated. The Fedora installer is just like, it asks you three questions, I think. What's your locale? What hard drives you want to install on? And what users you want to create? And that's like it. I'm sure that if I was running Wi-Fi, it might ask me some other questions, but like this is, this installer is awesome. So all I did here was set up my local user. I don't like having a root user on my system, so I'm just not gonna set the password, and that'll fix that. It's very similar to how Ubuntu does it by default, actually. So at this point, let's let the installer do its thing. So now that the Fedora installer is done, let's take a look at disks and see what the partition setup looks like. There's a whole bunch of block and loop devices here, which I don't think mean anything for the actual operating system install, but it looks like it actually partitioned it correctly. So let's go ahead and boot in. So in the bootloader, there are two entries, which is good. By default, we're using the open source NVIDIA driver, which is fine. The boot time was super, super fast, probably about 30 freaking seconds. My time is off. It's not midnight, which is weird. So we'll go ahead and sign in and we get the fancy GNOME setup screen. It doesn't appear to have an icon associated with it. If you can look at the top left, it's just like a blank sort of thing. It's kind of weird, but it looks like everything works. So let's do an update. Something like 300 megabytes of updates. It would have been nice if the installer did that for you, but I guess they don't want to assume that you have network or I'm sure they have the reasons. So let's go ahead and update it. All right, now that the update is done, I'm going to go ahead and install some software that I use on a somewhat everyday basis or at least regularly enough. I'm trying to remember these off the top of my head and obviously it's not all the software I use, but so far it's Node.js, Ruby development libraries, Audacity, GNOME tweak tool, which is not installed by default, and GNOME Builder for the Vala stuff that I do from time to time. Seems like a good list to start with, so we'll install this stuff. I also want to install the RPM Fusion repos, and since the last time I used Fedora, this has gotten so much easier. With Fedora 26, literally all you have to do is go to the RPM Fusion website, click the links, and it'll take you to GNOME Software, and you can install it straight from GNOME Software. I don't know what the last version of Fedora I used, but I don't remember it being this easy. In fact, the last Fedora I used, GNOME Software, wasn't even a thing, so that was a long time ago, I think. Now that we've got RPM Fusion, I'll install Caden Live. Caden Live should come with FMPEG, but I'm going to install it by hand. Caden Live brings along a fair number of dependencies, so we'll go ahead and install some other stuff in the background here. We'll need Discord, which comes from a copper repo. The Brave Browser, which comes from their own private repo and VS Code, which comes in the form of an RPM, but I think it's supposed to install a repo. And now that I have most of the software I'll need, it is time to tweak and customize my desktop. Now I'm not gonna do this on camera because this is an install video and I don't wanna blow the scope of this video out. I'm gonna stop here. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope this video has maybe tempted you into trying out Fedora. 
I wouldn't recommend Fedora to brand new Linux users or beginners because you have to kind of know a few things about how Linux and Linux on the desktop works to really get the most of it. It's not as beginner friendly as Ubuntu, but I think that's okay. Fedora is a super freaking awesome distro, and I would say that it's probably one of the most underrated distros out there, and you should really check it out. If you like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. I appreciate your support, and thanks for watching.